All right, in this uh, short video, we'll try and dig a little bit more into what it means to do thermodynamic work, uh, which we saw in our first law equations, but what exactly uh, does that mean? But let's look uh, at a heat engine example. Uh, and this is the kind of example that thermodynamics is really um, focused on. And when we say heat engine, all we're talking about is something that converts thermal energy into work. So here we have a piston. Uh, we might think of this as a, in a you know, uh, combustion system like a car, but that's not the only kind of heat engine there is. But this is a, it's a good example. So what happens in a heat engine? Well, it cycles, right? So the piston's going to start one place and it's going to end up back at the same place. Um, and we have a couple of things that happen here. So we transfer heat into the system, right? So maybe I put some, uh, some gasoline there and ignite the gasoline, right? So I've got some heat there. The heat is going to cause the gas to expand, right? And it's going to push the piston. It's going to do some work on the piston. And that's the second step. So you have heat in, the gas coming in. You have work out here because the system is doing work on the piston. It's pushing that piston off to the right. Uh, and it's doing that because it's expanding. Uh, and then finally, in order to get the piston back to where it started, we need to expel some of those gases. And that means we're expelling uh, some heat energy. Um, and so you actually have a Q out. It's sometimes a Q called QC, Q cold, that is, and this is called Q hot. Okay, so that's your basic uh, heat engine cycle. You put some heat in, you get some work done, uh, and then you expel some waste heat, and you end up back where you started. All right, so how do we know how much work is being done? Well, um, we can calculate that, right? So we take a, our piston here. And let's say the gas is expanding. It's doing work on the piston. Okay. Um, and we can define that work. We know that work is defined as force times change in distance. Right. And if you figure out, you look at through the units, you'll see that those units are the same as pressure uh, times change in volume. Okay. So what does that mean? Well, the pressure in here is doing the work. So that's providing the force. Um, and that it's going to push it a certain distance here, right? And when we multiply that area of this circle times D, we're going to get a volume, okay? So that's all that is. Um, it's just a different way of writing FD. Um, but op more often, we know what the pressure is in the gas and uh, don't know what the forces are. Um, so when we have a process like this, that the pressure stays the same throughout, we call it isobaric. So if we plotted that, over here, we have a PV plot, right? So pressure on this y-axis, uh, volume on the x-axis. Uh, if we move from this state to this state, right? We've moved at the same pressure, it's isobaric, from a low volume to a high volume. Then we've done some positive work. We can calculate that positive work by finding the area under that line because that's going to be P times change in V, right? Just like any X, Y axis uh, problem. If I go the other way, if the piston uh, moves down, right, and, and V gets smaller from B to A, uh, then we've actually done negative work, okay? That means the environment has done work on the system, right? Something here is pushing down and it's pushing uh, onto that system. Uh, and so if we found, if we were moving from here to there and found the area under it, we would be keep finding uh, the work that is done on the system rather than the work done by the system. <clears throat> so if we have a cyclical system like this, and this is what a heat engine cycle looks like, we're returning to the same point, right? Um, then we can find the area inside the square here, right? Why is that? Because the, air, the work done by the system is the area under this line, right? And the work done on the system is the area under this line. So we're essentially taking this whole area and then we're subtracting this area. 
So we get this area here, the area within, within the cycle. So that gives us a good way to visualize how much work is being done by a system, the, to the network. <coughs> All right, so let's calculate this, right? Let's how much work is being done here. So here we have, we can imagine this as a piston. It expands, right? Uh, it does some work here. Um, the pressure is lowered in the system without any work being done, right? Because the volume doesn't change, so there's no work. Uh, and then some hot gas is expelled, and the volume shrinks down, right? Um, so that here's the volume shrinking down. The environment is doing work on the system, uh, and then uh, the pressure is increased by adding thermal energy, and we start the whole process again. So what's the work out here? Well, it's uh, the change in pressure, right, from A to B times the pressure at that uh, level, okay? So the pressure there, our plot tells us, it's 1.5 times 10 to the 6 pascals, and that's this number here. Um, and then we have a change in volume, right? So our delta V here is that. So there's our delta V, and then this is just a conversion uh, factor, right? We want to make sure that our meters match up with our centimeters. And we get 750 joules. So that's the work the system is doing as it expands. Then we can figure out the work in, right? How much uh, negative work is being done. Uh, again, we have pressure. We find the pressure, multiply it by the delta V. I have a conversion factor. And we find that the environment is doing uh, 100 joules of work on the system from C to D. That is, as the piston is returning to its, uh, uh, to its smaller volume. So then we combine W total by adding the two of them. We find it 650 joules. What does that mean? It means that this piston has done 650 joules of work, uh, and it means that at least that much energy, and as we'll see, a, a good bit more uh, would be required uh, in order to make that, that heat engine work. <coughs>